Hi everyone, my name is Vivek Kale. I'm going to speak to you today about a technique to use in OpenMP called low overhead loop scheduling for uh, improving the performance of scientific applications that use MPI plus OpenMP. So this is a part of the Solve project and Solve is an ECP uh, sub-project that it runs from uh, 2017 to 2023. Um, uh, the idea of Solve is to have an exascale-ready OpenMP that will be able to be deployed for applications that are running on exascale supercomputers. Um, in this talk, I am going to focus on strategies within this Solve framework that have to do with these two sub-layers um, uh, uh, that is the uh, runtime system here and the compilers uh, of Solve. And at the top of the, uh, this transparent layer is the OpenMP specification. That's where all the, the language committee does the, um, the deciding of new features. And so this is kind of the prototyping of new research features that we are doing within the Solve project. This one particular one being low overhead loop scheduling. So let's take a step back and think about the, uh, 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 these um, uh, 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 HPC applications. Uh, what do they look like? Well, um, so you first have this um, uh, typically an uh, MPI init and then followed by this uh, time step loop, which is this outer iteration. And then within that iteration, there's a border exchange or some side of uh, either blocking or non-blocking MPI uh, communication. And that could be a loosely, and that's a loosely or bulkly, bulk synchronous MPI collective communication. Within that uh, region is this computation portion or computation region and you can have mu multiple uh, regions like this this is um, this is just um, I've just made this for conciseness um, and also the other thing is you can have many interleavings of computation and communication within the time step so a key problem of this sort of application is the following and it has to do with uh, th what happens within a node. In each time step, um, there is some. Uh, there can be some uh, load imbalance within node, and that within node load imbalance is large enough to impact the uh, overall application performance. And uh, so, what I'm illustrating here is time uh, as uh, from uh, right to left and uh, core number uh, from up to down. And as you're going from right to left, you see this, um, uh, the, you, these bars are time spent in computation. You see this um, load imbalance within, um, uh, across cores. And um, I'll just make a point that these are nodes here when you um, uh, group these cores into pieces. Um, and so, how do you fix this? Well, the simple way is to just redistribute work in each time step through some oracle, and that uh, and that makes that allows for this distribution. Note that this here, uh, this uh, this node here, does not actually isn't load balanced across uh, these nodes. Um, so. Uh, this is just a point I want to make uh, that we are not trying to solve this particular problem. It's just the within node load balance. And there's actually also another type of load imbalance, and that's um, this problem uh, of noise amplification. And what happens is that on every time step, again, this is the same t sort of plot, there's 
some noise event shown in the red, and that delays some iteration that causes a load imbalance within a node, and that actually, if you have a bulk synchronous execution, that causes a global uh, delay. So in each iteration on some node, you're going to have, if you, once you have this global delay, uh, you will suffer a big slowdown. And so here also you can improve performance just by doing some redistribution within node. Um, and so, uh, so um, right here, uh, how do we do near perfect worth distribution within node? That's the key question we want to answer. And there's, um, I'll just start with this simple diagram here that's just illustrating the computation in one time step. And we're in this talk, we're going to focus on just the OpenMP computation region in the MPI plus OpenMP program. And the first tactic is to just say, just try the OpenMP dynamic schedule, um, chunk size one. So um, doing that will. Uh, so I'll just show you what that looks like. So that's OpenMP dynamic right there. And that, uh, that is uh, going to create a lot of overhead as soon as you um, have several uh, large trip count and you have, uh, you're running on many a number of cores. So an idea to fix this is to have this um, hybrid uh, load balancing system within Node that does the first s some fraction of iteration statically, and so this uh, this is determined by some this fraction F D denoted here in this uh, formula, and then the remaining dynamically. And what happens is that threads will will work on the static work, and then as soon as they're done, they don't wait and then continue in the, on and do the dynamic work. The idea is to tune that FD parameter for each uh, loop and for each, uh, in fact, for each uh, MPI process, um, which I'll show you in a second, that uh, uh, such that the um, performance uh, is the best. That is, that the load imbalance improves, uh, reduces the thread idle time and the data locality, uh, uh, the cost of data locality is minimized. And so uh, for the base, the basic strategy, we'll just assume, we'll just think of one node right now. And um, this is actually, I'll just skip over this. This is an enhanced loop scheduling strategy um, that uh, allows for improving spatial locality. We're just, Redistribution, redistributing the iterations in the loop iteration space to uh, allow for uh, fewer cache misses. <coughs> so, um, with this basic static dynamic scheduling strategy, in due time, I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, we found that for a communication uh, avoiding LU code um, that um, that was deemed to be already faster. Then, uh, the f as fast as um, and, um, the uh, or much faster than the baseline LU code, we actually Im further improved it uh, by um, by 34 percent. Our improve our what we did was we had a mixed static dynamic scheduling strategy um, using 10 percent dynamic scheduling. So the FD in my formula uh, is. Um, Point one, and uh, we actually also changed its data layouts, um, which is actually, uh, they'll just say that, that that has to do with the spatial locality. Um, and the uh, what we found is uh, significant improvements over the static CALU shown in blue. Furthermore, um, we also beat the Intel MKL library using uh, that used the similar numerical algorithm and the Plasma runtime system uh, um, implement uh, their implementation um, which uh, which had pretty much the same algorithm on on this uh, on the left here you'll see that this is for these are histogram distributions of just running this uh, CLU uh, 
uh, two level block layout, which was our fastest one. Um, we ran this uh, many times. We, f we see that the performance variation is very low when we use mixed static dynamic scheduling. And that's good for scaling, um, uh, as, uh, especially as we go to a very, very large number of nodes. Um, so I also did a study where uh, we, ha we have separate static fractions per uh, MPI process. So we actually created a runtime library to identify which, uh, what the best static fraction or dynamic fraction was. And this is just kind of a soft, the software architecture of that. Um, you can uh, you can go into uh, my papers and look at how we did this for more information. Um, these are some results with the uh, with the uh, adaptive um, uh, uh, MPI differentiated static fractions, and you can see as we scale up, uh, we get a performance improvement over the dynamic scheduling and guided scheduling. Uh, for an n-body computation, um, the we also this is actually uh, some more recent work related to this uh, the ideas we explored. Um, we actually found that through uh, through a related technique, um, except in task schedule the task loop um, uh, using task loops, we found that doing what we are doing through this locality aware scheduling, we actually improve. Um, uh, we reduce energy consumption on um, uh, uh, due to the less data movement, and so uh, I'll now I'll just take a step back again. Uh, solve um, solve is a um, work in progress uh, in terms of a software that should be able to be used by uh, application programmers to know to get their hands on the latest research. Um, and development that's been go going on in this uh, the solve project. So, I've made a SPAC package for it. Um, you can get you can, you are also able to um, obtain it through GitHub, and you can actually get some of my low overload loop scheduling strategies from there. Um, and there should be more improvements to it coming soon uh, in the next year. Um, I'll, a, one particular part uh, that I've done for the op in the OpenMP spec is propose this idea of a user-defined schedule. So there's user-defined rock productions. Recently, user-defined mappers for GPUs. User-defined schedules kind of follow in the same spirit. Um, they, they are trying to be uh, this um, allowing users to define how they want the loop scheduling strategy to be by intercepting the runtime and being able to just say, here's how you dequeue a function, here's how you on-queue, and whatnot. So this is how, uh, this is how a user-defined schedule would look. You just declare a new schedule, you, ha you attach it with some functions, and then you use the schedule. You can see more in ticket number 678 um, in the OpenMP track system. Um, and, and um, uh, we expect this to be um, probably an OpenMP 6.0. Uh, I'll just say on Rod. Oh, so for performance portability, uh, we then built. We actually built on top of uh, the loop scheduling strategies that we've already developed, and in particular user-defined schedules. Uh, we hope to uh, in incorporate in the Roger library. So that key idea is to take this original code and just uh, um, uh, produce this Raja, um, uh, Raja layer that allows for the application programmer to just focus on the parallel, uh, the, their, their science here. And then this is the Raja library implementation of the loop scheduling strategy. So this, um, we are, there, I have a GitHub fork for, for this version of Raja with the lightweight scheduling, um, and uh, you're welcome to try it out. And, okay. So there's one 
more thing that I've done, uh, and that is uh, to combine loop scheduling within Node with a cross-node load balancing. This is uh, some recent work, and um, I've actually got some good results for it. Um, and what we do is just put inside the charm plus plus runtime system this uh, low overhead loop scheduling strategy, and we adjust the loop scheduling strategy uh, for the load of the given the parameters of load balancing across node strategy, and we do vice versa uh, to have a load balancing strategy to be adapted for the loop scheduling strategy. And this allows for a synergistic load balancing and loop scheduling technique. You can um, check it out if you want from Bitbucket, if you'd like. And these are some results for the particle and cell application. And uh, this was run on Blue Waters. Um, here's some related work. How much time? So here's related work. Here's what we're doing. Um, and uh, this is where, in the solve project, we've impacted. Um, I just have some points on the CPU and GPU. Uh, there's some work being done for um, uh, partitioning across CPUs or GPUs using loop scheduling. And um, uh, we're working on that on the next year. And I've also worked with NERSC at Berkeley to uh, implement the solve or the sparse solvers um, using this dynamic static scheduling strategy. And so th here's a summary. And um, thank you for your time.